Here it is, Friday afternoon. It's going on 6.30, and you know what? I just love looking out the window and seeing the sun still shining at 6.30 in the evening. Such a good feeling. I'm going to tell you something that may surprise you. It surprises me. Do you know that right now, you are watching the 260, wait a minute, the 265th video that I have posted on YouTube. 265 stories. I didn't know I had that much memory in my whole lifetime. So, a lady had just posted that she really liked the decoration on my table in one of my videos. Now, this was the video called um, Blender French Dressing, and I thought, what table setting she talking about? Well, I just sat and watched. Now, the, it was a kind of long video, but it was pretty interesting. And you know, the nice thing about watching that video was, it had been six months since I made it, so I'd forgotten what I'd said. I'm watching myself telling the story. And now and then, I even laughed and I was able to see the humor that other people see that I couldn't see when I did the video. I was looking at someone else watching myself. It was the story I was listening to, not me that I was watching. Didn't even think about it being me because I liked the story. And I discovered that when I first do the videos and I watch it and I think, oh goodness, that's terrible. They're not gonna like this video. It's because it's fresh in my mind and I can think of the mistakes I made and what I shouldn't, shouldn't have said. But as time goes by, those things pass, and I'm watching my own video, and I'm listening to the story. I'm not watching me. And you know, that's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. It made me feel better about my stories and not be so critical. I'm told all the time, you're too critical about your own stories. And that's true. In a way, it's true. I don't know if it's good or it's bad, but it's true. So, you are watching video number 265. Now, do you think you could go back to the beginning and watch the very first one which was called Strawberry Trifle. Do you think you could take my videos one at a time and watch them all? It would take you almost a year if you took them one day at a time. Skip the day now and then. You would have a full year of videos by me. Now I'm not bragging. But I am a little bit surprised that I have come up with that many stories. Some I may have repe repeated here and there, but that happens, we know. In fact, I repeat stories to Jan every time I tell her something. She says, Mom, you've told me that three times. So I may do the same thing with my videos. Now, <clears throat> 
didn't really have anything in mind other than I was just kind of excited about how many videos I've done so far, and I wanted to remind you of them. So I was looking through my uh, notes, and I came across a little story I'd written. I don't know how many years ago I wrote this, but I thought this is rather interesting. I think I'll give this to my viewers, and sometimes it's better to read it than it is to try to remember what I wrote because I won't tell it the way I want it told. So I'm going to read this to you and I hope you enjoy it. The title of this is Saltine Crackers. What can you say about saltine crackers? Well, let me read it to you. Remember when you came home from school each afternoon and you were starved for a snack? My mother didn't have fruits except in the summer when apples and plums could be picked off the trees in the backyard. Our backyard had two plum trees that were loaded every summer. Mama made plum jelly and the gooseberries were plentiful at the upper corner of the house. They too were turned into jelly. My parents came from an era when every small item that could become a food resource was used to feed large families. My mother knew them all. Now, this brings me to my subject. I saw a picture of a stack of saltine crackers and remembered when they were the only kind of crackers ever bought in our house. I'm amazed today at the dozens of varied crackers on the grocery shelves. It's almost impossible to pick a favorite. Did you ever put mayonnaise on saltines for a snack? I'd forgotten all about that. Saltines were a standby for a family running over with kids. I ate them many times. Do you realize <clears throat> saltines are probably the cheapest item in the grocery store you can buy besides Morton salts. Have you ever made mock apple pie? I haven't, simply because apple pie is not one of my favorites. Do you know where the old saltine cracker recipe came from? Most of you won't know because you weren't raised during the Great Depression, a period when many, many households went hungry and saltine cracker recipes were developed to keep children from going to bed at night on an empty stomach. More recipes were created immediately following and during World War II. Every household was limited to food products, another period that for many of you is only a time in history. I'm one of the few you can recall, who can recall those days. We too of my era will be known as history very soon. Our stories of the Great Depression and World War II will die with us. During the days of the Depression, people would enter a diner and ask for a, couple of hot, a cup of hot water. Sitting on the table was a bottle of ketchup and a basket of crackers. They would mix the ketchup and saltines in the hot water with a little salt and pepper and create a cup of tomato soup that would satisfy the hunger pains for the day. I bet many of you did not know that. Have you heard of cracker flitters? Simple recipe is to soak crackers in water, fry in oil or leftover grease, and cover with maple syrup or sugar. Now tell me a kid wouldn't fill their tummies with a handful of those. Keep in mind, saltines is still the cheapest item you can purchase at the grocery store these days. With the price of cereal, how about crackers in milk with sugar and maybe a little cinnamon? Let's see, where'd I get? 
I lost my place. Okay, served the same purpose, and it's a good bit cheaper. Even desserts were created by the use of saltines, where today we use graham crackers and vanilla wafers. You're talking about four and five dollars a box. Try spreading Worcestershire sauce and butter on crackers and bake them for five minutes. Sounds like a party treat to me. Did you know that the Hello Dolly bars made with graham crackers were first made with saltines? That was a surprise to me. From the looks of things, we Americans may be going back to the days of creating meals with minimum resources. The grocery shelves are half empty and the items you seek are not there. Would you even think that something like a small jar of pimentos would not be available? The shelf was empty just the other day when I was looking. Keep in mind, I wrote this a few years ago. Unlike the days of the Depression, we have refrigerators that have freezers. We can stock up on meat supplies for a short period of time. Although many families still do summer canning, canned goods can be stored away for future use. We have learned how to economize and take advantage of sale items. But during the Depression, there was no money to purchase added food products. The only good thing I can say about the ever-loving credit card is that I wish I had had one in 1962 when I was in need of it. Do you recall that year? 13 days in October 1962? We waited, seemingly, on the brink of a nuclear war. It was called the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was the most terrifying time of my life. People panicked. They waited in fear. Grocery shelves were depleted of product in a matter of hours. They were seeking shelter when there was no shelter to be had. Americans were living in fear of a nuclear, uh, nuclear attack by the Russians. Now, we didn't have a credit card. We didn't have extra money. We could not buy extra food or supplies. Basements were cleared out and turned into one-room shelters. Then shelves were filled with bottles of water, food products, bedding, and battery lights were installed. I was a young mother of two, ages six and three. The house we lived in had a walk-in basement with windows. It was our only means of security. One dark dirt floor room was underground with a single electric light hanging from the ceiling. We would then be living by candlelight until the candles ran out. That dark, damp room was where my family would be living for an unlimited amount of time. My husband did his best to prepare the room where we would be staying 24 hours a day. Gallon jugs were filled with water and aspirin added. How long could that last? We had another disadvantage. We didn't have money for extra supplies and food. My husband's income did not give us an extra allowance for emergencies. How long could we survive without food? How could I explain our existence to my small children? When I see what is happening in our country today, I think back on the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was fear like I have never known. I pray that we will not face such fear again. We came close with 9-11. Strange how a simple subject like saltine crackers can begin with the Great Depression, World War II, 
and on to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Do you remember when the Great Smoky Mountains were ravaged with fire? That's just a few years ago. One of the churches near me was gathering food and supplies for the homeless families in the mountains still fighting the fires. I asked myself what food item does not need refrigeration or cooking for preservation. Saltine crackers and peanut butter. They will satisfy kids' hunger, and every kid likes them. I went to Kroger and loaded up. Unfortunately, they were on sale that day. I think that's where I ended my story. I must have run out. So anyway, I just wanted to read that to you because it's a little bit of history that young people today have no real, uh, realization about. But back to my uh, YouTube stories, you know, I feel pretty good about that. And I have to give you people a lot of credit because I would not have stuck with it if I hadn't received such good response. Because I'm one of those that I give up. I can give up easy. But so far, you've kept me going. And when I read or watched myself telling the story about my sister's blender French dressing recipe, I liked that story. I was pleased with it, not because I was the one telling it, because I approved of what I was watching. And that, that means a lot, it means a lot. When you're working on something and success depends on the approval of your viewers. My daughter is working on her class reunion high school. It's going to be tomorrow night. I'm going to be there. Well, I'm going to help. Some of us mothers, older, wanted to be there. So this was our way of getting into our children's class reunion. 50th class re reunion for them. And Jan has planned it all. Some people say, oh, she takes after you. She's got your talent. I said, no, no, no. She does not take after me. Those talents are hers. I can't take credit for any of them. We think entirely different. But I'm always willing to help her wherever she needs it. Now, I can't tell you about the reunion yet because... I don't want to give away the things she has planned, and and I know it's going to work very well because she's got good ideas. She thinks of things I would never have thought of. And in this being a 50th class reunion, think of the number 50. She's worked with that, and her classmates are going to be pleased. So, I'm trying to figure what I'm going to wear. Of course, I'll wear my glitzy glasses. People won't recognize me if I don't have my glasses on. So, when that is over, I'll give you a good report on a 50th class reunion. And some of you might be planning just that same thing. And you might be wondering what can I do? I wish I had some good ideas. And when this reunion is over, check back. I think you will get some good ideas for your own class reunion. There was something I was going to tell you. Uh, when I fell and got the big knot on my noggin, 
had to be brought into the emergency room there at in my hometown. Two young nurses were taking care of me, and they, pretty girls, very friendly, and they were taking the temperature, they were taking the blood pressure, they do what well, you know all that stuff that you have to go through when you go into a hospital or even to the doctor's office. And one of the girls said to me, "Do you know June? I won't give her last name." I said, yes, she's my mother. I said, I went through school with your daddy, all through school. And she laughed and we started up a big conversation. Now you wouldn't have thought at that point that I had a baseball size knot on the back of my head when we got into conversation about my high school friend. I said, your daddy and I planned the first high school class reunion together, just the two of us, just the two of us. It was 15 years before we had our first class reunion and he said to me, I want you to help me with this. We're not going to have committees. We're not going to have group taking care of this, that, and the other. Because you can't depend on them. You have to follow up on everything they say and do. And sometimes they don't do their job. So I think the two of us can do the class reunion. We did. We did it again five years later, and five years later, and five years later. So, I told her, I said, you know, I used to come home the day before the reunion, and I would sit at your parents' dining room table and listen to your dad telling stories from high school. And I have never laughed so much in my life. And she said, he's told me a lot of those stories and they are so funny. I said, but there are one or two stories he hasn't told you. And she said, what would that be? And I said, he was the first boy that ever kissed me. She just fell back laughing. She thought that was so funny. And of course, my daughter was standing there listening too. And I went on to give a few little details about our high school days and the fun things we did. And there I was thinking a few hours early, earlier in the afternoon, I have had a death-defying experience here, am I going to die? I'm telling you the truth now. That was the first thought I had when I hit the floor. Am I going to die? But look at me now. You can't see that knot on the head. Mama said I was hard-headed and Mama was right. But I tell you what, I said immediately, the Lord must have plans for me. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't know why I'm still here. So, I don't know what the future has to hold for me. But right now, I'm kind of having fun with YouTube. And you people are making it fun for me. I appreciate your compliments. I appreciate your comments. Uh, anything that I can learn from you. And I've had a lot of good friends. Let's see. I was going to tell you the last 
and it's just a day or two ago, oh, I received a message from a lady in Honduras. I checked my list. I've tried to keep a list of all of the states and countries that I have received messages from. And I checked my list. No, Honduras was not on the list. So I got to add it. Australia, New Delhi, Islands. I can't name all of them. I don't think I have Tokyo or Japan or, let's see, North Korea. Don't have those yet. And I'll be surprised when I do see a message from one of those countries, or Iran, but Poland, Australia, China, New Delhi, Canada, can't leave out Canada. Got several friends, oh gosh. One lady is so funny. She put the funniest messages to me, and I think she's just adorable. She keeps me laughing. And I think she sees that I have a good sense of humor, too. So, uh, I, I'm always pleased when I see a message from her. And I could go on and on, but I don't want this story to be so long that you think, hmm, when's she going to get through? Okay, I'm through now. But I want you to go back, and I want you to... Find the story about blender, what was that, blender French dressing. I want you to watch that again. I liked it, and I want to see if you like it as well as I did. So, that gives me a little more confidence when I can like my own stories. And then I read where you like them too. So you take care today. Have a good day and have a good weekend and I'll be getting back with you. Thank you.